Oleksandr Pavlyuchenko, executive director of the Ukrainian Helsinki Human Rights Union, joins me now. Mr. Pavlyuchenko, greetings and thanks for joining. Uh, hello and uh, greetings from my side. So, the Russians continue to forcibly abduct pro-Ukrainian civilians in the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine and set up a new torture chambers to hold them. What are the mechanisms for the release uh, of civilian prisoners from Russian captivity? Uh, for the time being, we have not too much possibility to uh, influence on the situation with the uh, civilian hostages uh, uh, captured uh, on uh, occupied territories of Ukraine by Russian uh, military uh, forces or uh, current uh, regime uh, introduced on these territories. Uh, we have dozens or even hundreds of persons uh, Ukrainian citizens who uh, continue to stay on the occupied territories and they are the victims of the illegal detention. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, we are speaking about the uh, persons who uh, participate in different uh, type of resistance actions uh, and it was especially uh, in the uh, first months of, of the occupation of this territory, but still it's continuing practice. Uh, the uh, question on the possible uh, deliberation or the uh, influence on the destiny of these uh, uh, civilian hostages uh, is in the uh, hands of the, uh, uh, first of all, uh, international uh, instruments and international organizations like uh, ICHR, International uh, um, Committee uh, of the uh, uh, Red Cross. Um, but uh, uh, in the routine uh, practice, uh, ICHR representatives uh, are refused to visit even the uh, places of detention, and they are allowed to visit such uh, places uh, only uh, in the, uh, uh, let's say, prepared situation when they uh, may see only uh, the order and uh, no violations uh, of the uh, human rights, uh, uh, the beaten persons, the uh, traces of tortures uh, uh, are not demonstrated, and uh, even the conditions of detentions uh, in, in very different locations are, nor uh, are, are let's say, uh, presented as normal. So we but have. May I, may I say that these uh, international instruments you were talking about are not often effective because of what you just said? Uh, yeah, yeah, they they have very limited uh, uh, mandate to influence on this situation, and um, uh, yeah, fairly speaking, it's not the uh, strong instrument, uh, a kind of remedy that might uh, ameliorate the uh, situation and the conditions uh, of detention. At least uh, this is this single instrument uh, because we expect on the uh, third part uh, party uh, uh, a kind of uh, um, state uh, who will protect the rights uh, of the uh, uh, person in detentions uh, playing the role of the um, uh, humanitarian mediator uh, so-called uh, uh, third party pa uh, party provided even in the uh, Geneva Convention, a uh, neutral uh, country. Uh, possibly it might be China, Turkey, Kazakhstan or other uh, countries uh, by choice of both sides, uh, Ukraine and Russia, who are the uh, parts of this war. Uh, but uh, till today, we have not uh, such a third uh, uh, country protector, and um, uh, still we have the situation as it is. And uh, I may uh, just uh, uh, made 
one appreciation that we have two types of civilian hostages. Uh, first type, and it's very limited, we have uh, only dozens of such persons. They are in the, uh, uh, let's say, um, official detention places like uh, uh, pre-trial detention centers, CISO, Slitch Isolatory, or uh, ITT, uh, and they uh, still uh, are under uh, some control. But we have also illegal detention places where are hundreds of the persons, like uh, in Pervomaisk, uh, uh, recently opened uh, the um, illegal detention place, uh, and we have dozen of similar uh, illegal detention places. It's uh, rather torture places than detention places uh, where the person may spend from uh, some days till some months uh, in in human conditions and uh, under the tortures. So uh, these illegal detention places represent the uh, very uh, um, uh, problematic situation with the possibility to get the at least information on the persons who are uh, in uh, these detention places and without any possibility even to visit uh, them with the mentioned uh, earlier uh, international uh, representatives of IC ICHR or uh, possibly other uh, international groups uh, of monitors who may just uh, monitor and contact uh, uh, the persons who uh, are in these uh, captivities. And um, uh, Russia uh, should be also uh, uh, investigated and uh, properly, uh, let's say, uh, appreciated and punished uh, by this uh, uh, violation of uh, international humanitarian law, because we are speaking about the attitude towards the civil population on occupied territory, and Geneva Convention number four uh, protect uh, the uh, civilians uh, against such uh, inhuman treatment and uh, uh, this uh, grave violation of IHL should be considered uh, by uh, both uh, national uh, investigation services, uh, national police, uh, office of the prosecutor general, and possibly by international structures like International Criminal Court. Yeah, I see, but punishment, uh, I think uh, it will be quite a long history, I think, but it yeah. will be. And the Russian occupiers continue to force passportization of the population of the temporarily occupied territory of Kherson region. To speed up this process, the invaders conduct demonstrative raids aimed at intimidating the local population with possible deportation and alienation of property. If these people are taken uh, to Russia, how can they be returned to Ukraine? Uh, uh, well, we are speaking about the recent decree uh, signed by Putin on 27th of April. It's decree number 308 on passportization, uh, let's say forced passportization of the population on the occupied territories. Uh, they are mm, titled by other terminology uh, and uh, um, we are speaking about the, uh, let's say, the continuation of the uh, practice of uh, um, deleting uh, the Ukrainian nationality, and uh, I may appreciate it as the traces of uh, genocide practice uh, towards Ukrainian population on occupied territories. Um, practice demonstrated in Crimea uh, since 2014 in uh, uh, the Donetsk, Lugansk regions, uh, uh, again, uh, since 2014, uh, uh, 2015. Uh, and now we have the continuation of such a practice. Uh, the first uh, stage was, uh, let's say, the uh, proposal to get the Russian passports and Russian citizenship. Uh, and now it's the uh, use of the force, because <clears throat> 
provided uh, measures uh, uh, prescribe the uh, time limits uh, uh, to receive the Russian citizenship and the Russian passport, and then uh, to receive the obligations uh, related and linked to this uh, Russian citizenship, uh, like uh, um, uh, military obligation and uh, other, uh, let's say, rights and duties, uh, but uh, other duties than rights uh, uh, for the persons who will get the Russian citizenship. Um, how to avoid or what to do it's the good question because it's uh, from case to case should be considered separately and uh, uh, sometimes the benefits and the threats are different in uh, every case but for the man for example who might be uh, asked to uh, come to the military service uh, the risk uh, for this uh, get uh, received citizenship is much higher than for for example for the uh, um, handicapped person or other uh, vulnerable groups of population uh, who uh, requires uh, on social assistance medical assistance and uh, it brings them some benefits when they will get the russian passports when the person uh, uh, will receive these russian passports uh, they may continue to use their Ukrainian citizenship because they will not stop this uh, citizenship and they will continue to uh, have possibility to return to Ukraine uh, uh, at any uh, possible uh, uh, circumstances. And, uh, 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 and uh, when they will, for example, send to some Russian regions, they may uh, try to return to uh, via third countries uh, like Georgia, like uh, uh, in the uh, uh, eastern side or in western side, uh, uh, Baltic states, uh, uh, Latvia, Estonia, uh, they uh, have special uh, procedures and corridors for the uh, repatriants, uh, for the person uh, from Ukraine who tried to uh, return to uh, Ukraine from uh, Russia, from uh, uh, sometimes it's deportation, sometimes it's just a uh, 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 person who uh, avoided uh, uh, stay in the uh, situation of and, uh, the and, battles, yeah. And I hope more and more Ukrainians will at least try to come back uh, after they were abducted and uh, to uh, again to become uh, Ukrainian citizens. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Pavlichenko, for um, taking part in this uh, program. Uh, this was Alexander Pavlichenko, executive director of the Ukrainian Helsinki Human Rights Union. And we were talking about people who were abducted to Russia and how can they return to Ukraine. This is Spotlight Ukraine. More to come. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Latest news, trends, and analytics on all about Ukraine. Like, share, and subscribe. Any questions, proposals, and comments, contact us via email.